Okay, Glenn, so this is a, a mock-up really of the repair that you're going to be doing. This is a new boat, so I don't have a damaged surface to work with. So I've just marked it like that, show that it was cracked and marked. And what I've done is I've just put some masking tape. Let's just say you will be doing some masking tape along this edge here, provided there are no cracks around this corner. You'll just mask it off like that. And the idea is that you'll then take some 400 grit paper, and I'll just do it backwards. You'll just sand this down to remove any loose resin and to make it rough enough for the for the new gel coat to adhere. So something like that. Then you'll mix about a <clears throat> about a, a teaspoon, if that. Something like that should be fine. So maybe just a hair over a half a teaspoon. You can never mix this in really small quantities. You've always got to make a, a meaningful amount, a meaningful mix. So I would say never less than a half a than a half a teaspoon. Okay, once you've transferred that to your mixing bowl, you need to take some general purpose resin. And just take a screwdriver's worth, just like so, and basically you'll mix just a bit in twice, just about so much. So roughly two two dips of your of your screwdriver, and you get a mix that all up like that. <coughs> okay, to this you're going to add catalyst for that quantity about twelve drops. Actually, 10 looks about right. Make it 11. Now, this is a strange substance because when it dries, <clears throat> the part that you can feel is going to remain tacky. The part that hardens is the part that is uh, sealed off from air. So the part that actually touches where I'm going to paint is going to get hard inside, but the outside is going to remain tacky. So after the appropriate time, uh, probably an hour or so, you can you take a, a, a bit of acetone with a cloth and just gently wipe it uh, with with enough acetone, not you know, sort of liberal acetone on the cloth. Just give it a quick wipe and then leave it again. And then about ten minutes or so, you do you wipe it one more time and leave it for half an hour. Then it will harden, and you'll be able to sand it um, to be able to bring it back to to the to, to what it's supposed to be. Okay, make sure you mix this very 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 thoroughly. Um, all the parts must be mixed carefully. Okay, that's it. Okay, and now with something like that, a paintbrush, something that size, you're going to paint this on here. I've also taped along there just below the bead, because he always goes around the corner from what I remember. Is to paint it on quite liberally so that it's fairly thick so you can sand it down if you see any black lines in it you've got to cover them over so you think essentially you want about a, a one at least a one more at least a one and one to one and a half more layer of this pigment on top like that carefully there too okay but i think you get the picture don't push hard, just let it make a, a nice layer, <clears throat> which you then leave to dry. Collapses, fill it up again. But it needs to be thick, it's not, a, it's not something you, you paint on tightly, you'll sand it down. You can't apply the right amount to start, it's got to be more. Okay, that's basically it. Now you leave that to dry. <clears throat> and when it's dry, you come back with, with your paper starting again with about... You can do a very little bit with 100 grit, but quickly transfer into 400 grit, and you'll go through may, 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 all the grits, maybe uh, then, uh, from 400, 800, 1200, and then 2000. You sand it when it's all nicely shaped and it looks good, then you'll use, you'll use rubbing compound to polish it up. But that's the first part of the, of the repair. Okay, so magically now, that's all repaired, I've sanded it down, pulled my tape off, it's all dry, left it overnight, 
and I've now polished it off with something like that. It's a rubbing compound. Basically polished up this and eventually after that some regular uh, car wax or whatever you can whatever you can lay your hands on just to polish that up. When this is all repaired and this looks nice like that, we're going to do the repair underneath. So we start again. We are going to tape this section one more time. So right on the edge of the yellow. Just like so. You'll use a, well, I'm not sure if you have, maybe you have two trestles, but we use a, a keyboard stand, which I'll show you how we do. Okay, so now this is the section that that is cracked open. So what you do is your little sharp spike like that, and you pick out all the little pieces that are loose. So even that you can find that's loose, you pull it out, you pull it out, you pull it out, right through. Now, I notice on your one, um, okay, you can get right to where the crack starts. And on this side here, it comes about so far, and then it's, it, it sort of cracks through here. You can take as much as you can out, but it doesn't really matter if there's a fine crack, a fine hairline crack there. The way you're going to fix that, um, if you can't get it out, if you don't want to get it out, is you can take the super glue, the very, very thin running super glue, and run it gently into that crack right at the very end. Um, or up to you. If you can get it out all the way to there, that's fine. You're going to do the same as you did on the other side. You're going to tape this up. Now I've already taped this side because I don't want the white to, to appear there. Uh, now don't forget, you've got to leave you've got to leave a small gap two or three mils along the edge of the white. Now at the back here, you'll see where you basically line up with the other, the beading that you haven't removed. So that'll give you your spacing. You just line it up on the side of that and you make roughly the same spacing throughout. And on this side here, we're just going to fix that up. I want that to flow into this one. So it's going to look something like that. But it's important that you mask it off. Just like that. And as before, we are going to mix the white. A little over half a teaspoon. Like that should be enough. Now this time, you don't have to put the clear resin in at all. You just use this just like it is. And once more, um, probably seven or eight drops. Oh, ten, make it quick, eleven. Make it quick, where's my stick? I don't have a stick. And you mix the catalyst into the white pigment. Mix it very, very thoroughly. Make sure there's no streaks, it must be thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly mixed. There we go. <clears throat> All right, very old brush, but the regular one we use too large for this. But essentially, you slap it in. It's important to get it into the right into the crack. So you come right around. Then, like so, pushing it in. All right, and then you finish off, basically just make sure it's, that it's what's going in is staying there. Okay, and then with a small amount on the brush, you basically slap it like that. And so it's a little thicker and you'll see that it'll settle down and become a bead. That's it. Oh, we might as well fix up here. Yellow 
So where you go onto the other bead, where, the, where it's already raised, you can pull it off. Obviously, you don't want a big bump there. And that's it. Okay, and you've got it to look half decent while it's full wet. You peel it. Peel off the resin. I mean, sorry, the resin, the masking tape. Like so. And you do all of this while the resin is still wet. Otherwise you find that it pulls and it makes lumps. Right, and that is the repair to the Okay, so that is the repair to the fin, or the, the, what do they call it, the, what to call it. Um, anyway, that section, and obviously you wipe up, mop up anything that's left over, so there's a little extra little resin there, you can just pull that in like that, wipe it on. Other than that, that looks perfect, and now it's just a matter of leaving it for an hour or two. Uh, this you won't sand or polish or anything, you just leave it to settle, just like that, and that's it. Now, what I was saying to you again was, um, anytime you see, a, even if there's a little hairline crack in the resin, uh, the super glue does as good, if not better job. If you drop it into the crack, a fine, like a hairline crack, um, it will seal it perfectly, it's hellishly strong, and there's no harm done in simply using super glue, the very fine super glue, to drop in, not here, but if you see a little crack right where you've ended your your cleaning and, pre and preparation. And then with your pump, you will easily check this if there's still a leak. Um, I hope that's helpful.